at first glance. This peaceful, huge, blue planet does not appear to attract much notice. It may look a serene place where you can enjoy solitude, but in fact, it is actually a very bizarre and violent place. Neptune's atmosphere has dark patches that appear and disappear, as well as brilliant cirrus-like clouds that vary quickly. Whether these dark spots on Neptune are storms that rotate on the clock or holes in the atmosphere, Neptune nonetheless shows a highly dynamic atmosphere that changes with temperature and extremely rapid rates of wind. In fact, the highest winds observed in the solar system were measured on Neptune at blistering speeds approaching 1,200 miles per hour near the oldest great dark spot. The Great Dark Spot An atmospheric storm that bright pale blue cloud bands that accompany the storm were seen on Neptune when NASA's Voyager 2 spacecraft photographed it less than five days before it came closest to the planet on August 25, 1989. The storm came as a complete surprise to the scientists working at NASA. While it vanished by the time the Hubble Space Telescope examined the planet five years later, scientists were puzzled as to why the winds were so strong. And this isn't the only secret that Neptune is hiding. Scientists have discovered that something horrifying is happening to the planet deep under its surface. What is it? Why is it happening in the first place? Join us as we dive deep into the mysterious theory that rendered scientists completely shocked. The ice giant Neptune, which is more than 30 times farther away from the Earth than the Sun, is one of the big planets in our solar system that is invisible to the naked eye, and its discovery was nothing short of miraculous. In theory, a planet in place of Neptune was already predicted in mathematics prior to its discovery. Uranus and Neptune, the two outermost planets of our solar system, are both ice giants, cold worlds made up partly of gas, partly of ice, and of a similar chemical composition dark, cold, and buffeted by hypersonic winds. Ice giant Neptune is the eighth and farthest planet in our solar system. Neptune also has 14 known moons, with the largest being Triton. Triton is the seventh largest known moon in our solar family, and is the only moon in the solar system that orbits retrogradely or opposite the rotation of the planet. One of the many thrilling facts that people tend to miss about Neptune is that Neptune circles the Sun every 164.8 years at a distance of 30.1 astronomical units on average, and because of its great distance from the Sun, a year on Neptune is extremely long, demanding 165 Earth years to complete one round of the Sun. So, although Pluto's average distance from the Sun is larger than Neptune's, Neptune's orbit is so eccentric that Pluto is actually closer to the Sun approximately 20 years into each cycle than Neptune. NASA's Voyager spacecraft sailed past Neptune 30 years ago, producing the first ever close-up photos of the planet. Voyager 2 got as close to any of the outer planets as any mission had ever gotten, revealing four entire rings of ice and rock, six new moons, and the Great Dark Spot, a cyclone the size of the Earth lashing out over Neptune's southern hemisphere. On August 25, 1989, during Voyager 2's final visit to the planet, the spacecraft sailed barely 4,950 kilometers over Neptune's northern pole, the spacecraft's closest approach to any body, since it left Earth in 1977. Voyager 2 sailed over Neptune barely 22 miles off course and a second behind schedule. The 1989 flyby of Neptune by the Voyager 2 probe became the point at which every planet in the solar system had been visited by a space mission after the International Astronomical Union demoted Pluto from planetary classification in 2006. The Voyager 2 spacecraft visited all four outer planets, as well as their moons and rings, for the first time, including Uranus and Neptune, which had previously been undiscovered. During Voyager 2's approach to Neptune, an engineering crew changed the direction and velocity of the spacecraft to allow for near flybys of Triton, the planet's biggest moon. The completion of the Neptune flyby marked the start of Voyager's interstellar mission, which is still ongoing 42 years later. From the several stunning images Voyager 2 sent back onto the Earth, some pictures kept NASA scientists off guard. But there was another discovery of a massive and violent storm. It was first noticed in the Southern Hemisphere as a counterclockwise wind with speeds of up to 1,500 miles per hour or 2,414 kilometers per hour. It was the most powerful storm ever recorded. 
It was dubbed the Great Dark Spot by astronomers. By the time the Hubble Space Telescope peered at the planet five years later, it had vanished. This sparked a flurry of inquiries as to why the winds were so fierce. The tremendous wind, however, was not the only aspect of Neptune that perplexed astronomers. Its temperature was a surprise as well. Despite being further from the Sun, Voyager 2 discovered that Neptune is warmer than Uranus. The common thought was that the farther you traveled away from the Sun in the cosmos, the colder it grew. Neptune, on the other hand, had more heat than Uranus. The issue is, where is the heat coming from on Neptune? Some scientists even hypothesized that solving one riddle might help them solve the other. However, how would this be accomplished? Since gauging Neptune's temperature is more difficult than it is on Earth, where you can take measurements on a solid surface and derive the global average. If you must take Neptune's temperature, you must do it at a high height. This is where you must make a new choice. At what height will the measurement be taken? There's more to the Voyager 2's temperature reading than meets the eye. Obviously, it got the temperature from the outermost layer, and Neptune's temperature isn't that much greater than that of Uranus at that point. This shouldn't be the case since Neptune gets less solar light due to its distance from the Sun. Neptune is warmer in terms of how much heat it generates in relation to how much heat it receives from the Sun, as this similarity in temperature shows. According to NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies, Neptune emits more than double the amount of heat it takes from the Sun, but Uranus does not. However, this does not make Neptune odd. In fact, it makes Uranus strange since other planets, such as Jupiter and Saturn also produce more heat than they take from the Sun. As previously mentioned, the development in temperature as you go further away from the Sun demonstrates that Jupiter is the hottest of the gas giants, followed by Saturn and finally Neptune. Uranus is the one that isn't quite right. NASA's study went on to discuss the oddity further. Despite the fact that Uranus lacks a large internal heat source, this unexpected finding is still linked to it. In other words, Neptune is finding a method to warm up to the same temperature as Uranus, despite the latter's inability to create any more heat beyond that provided by the Sun. What, however, is an internal heat source? In simple terms, it is heat left over from the birth of the solar system when these planets were formed. The Kelvin-Helmholtz contraction is a phenomenon that occurs when heat escapes from an early solar nebula. Gravitational contraction is the primary source of additional heat on Neptune, Jupiter, and Saturn. The material descending within turns its potential energy into thermal energy, which is eventually released upwardly out of the globe when the planet gravitationally compresses. Something must have occurred to Uranus for it to not have such a heat source. So, why does Neptune generate heat inside whereas Uranus does not? It's possible that heat isn't emitted from the inside at a constant pace, but rather in burps. According to a new study, we may be observing Uranus in a dormant phase while Neptune has lately burped. Burps are a kind of convection that may occur in distinct episodes, separated by significant periods of time. However, we won't know for sure whether it works this way until one of these convective events occurs. It might also be a case of Uranus being older and Neptune being younger. According to NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, how much heat a planet emits is mostly determined by its age and how rapidly or slowly it releases that heat. An older planet would be colder, and how rapidly they are released depends on the internal structure and chemistry of the planet, as well as cloud layers, convection, and other factors, all of which may be intricate. NASA scientists are painfully aware that a single Voyager 2 flyby will not be enough to explain all of planet Neptune's mysteries. And this is where the James Webb Space Telescope comes in. The $10 billion Space Telescope is the biggest and the most complex space telescope ever built. While the Hubble Telescope collects images in mostly visible light, James Webb will mostly take pictures in infrared, revealing more detail about the objects in those images unlike ever before. As a matter of fact, it is so powerful that it can detect the heat signature of a bumblebee on Earth from our moon. Scientists are hoping that the newly launched space observatory will help them unravel the mysteries that have long lurked under Neptune's ocean surface. What are your thoughts about it? What is the reason behind the unusual heat emitted by Neptune, in your opinion? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Thank you for taking the time to view this video. I hope you really liked it. Consider subscribing to the channel if you liked the video. And as always, thanks for watching.